Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse. I am your host. Let's get into it. All right, everybody. Hail and welcome back to this week's episode of the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgarden Musings production available to you on all of your major podcast streaming sites, platforms, including YouTube, Spotify, and beyond. Um, if you guys are watching this today on the YouTube channel, please, if you don't mind, give this channel uh, a, a subscribe. Click that subscribe button. And uh, if you're watching this on Spotify or listening to this on Spotify, maybe you just happen to stumble upon it in your internet perusings and you're not yet following this podcast. Encourage you to do so there as well. Um, be sure to check the description or show notes of this podcast. There's a link tree link there that has all of my social media platforms where you can follow me, subscribe, like, um, you know, whatever the platform. Uh, asks for you to do, please do it and uh, see what we got going on here. I have a Patreon page. I have, um, what do you call it, a, a Teespring or Spring store with merchandise if you are so inclined and want to support what I do here monetarily. There are several ways that you can do it. Um, and it's all there in that link tree link. So thank you so much for checking that out. Um, another hot one this, this this week, ladies and gentlemen. Boy, I tell you, uh, it's been been a while since i've remembered a, a summer just quite this hot and i've been living in tennessee for nigh on to 20 years and uh yeah it's it's, it's just been been rough i'm gonna be so happy when the summer months are are in the rear view mirror you know um but you know it is what it is and uh be sure that you guys are staying hydrated um stay cool as best you can and be safe out there so uh we got a fun episode, I think, today, um, and, and here's kind of a funny preface to that before we get into the topic. I um, This is the second time that I've shot this episode, or I've filmed this episode, because the first time that I filmed it, um, I went to go into post-production and start working on, you know, getting the everything spliced up and, and edited how I like it to get ready to release today, and... Uh, I start listening to the video because that's what I do. I listen through it. I don't, you know, and I didn't hear anything. Oh, all right. I heard like background music, like you hear kind of, you know, softly in the background here. But I was watching my mouth move and there was nothing coming out of it. And um, I'm like, well, let me refresh or something. And then I realized that at one point during the episode, um, I looked at my streaming or my recording uh, software and it was muted. My microphone was muted. <laughs> and I and it was like 30 minutes of the episode that I had nothing coming out of my mouth. Like I was talking, but you wouldn't have been able to hear it. And then I caught it because I looked over and I saw like I had a splash through my microphone. And I said, oh, no, maybe I just because I thought I maybe had like bumped it. And it was, um, you know, a few seconds. So I like backed up my sentence and, and realized that. Uh, after the fact that you know a whole hour's worth of the episode was only half audible or you know you, you can only hear half of it so i had to scratch that file and say start over um so that's kind of funny um but uh the you know in a, in a way like you think about why things happen you know um there's a reason that way things happen at least the way a lot of times the way i look at things is you know there's a reason behind stuff, and uh, that was not an episode that, as much as I thought it was was well put together, you know, just it wouldn't wouldn't what it was supposed to be. So hopefully this one is better, and you guys enjoy it because today's episode is another viewer request, um, and this comes to the podcast via way of our hotline the midgard musings hotline the the phone number that i encourage everybody to to call if you have thoughts or ideas and um this this request 
Um, it was a bit of a drawn out one. We're going to hear a little bit today from uh, this person who calls in uh, who, who, or who called in last week. Because um, when you leave a voicemail on the hotline, like you, you've got three minutes to, to, to say what you want to say, and then it'll cut off. So if you want to say more, you've got to call back in and finish what you were saying and leave another voicemail. Well, this uh, this individual, she called back four times <laughs> and left four different voicemails. So we've got, you know, like 12 minutes worth of of, uh, of, of a voicemail to, to listen to, or I did. Um, we're not going to listen to all of it. We're going to listen to about half or so, I'd say. Um, because like I'd say like maybe the first half was... Um, you, there, there's just, you know, when, whenever you guys, and I, I want to make sure that I say this now, whenever, uh, when I say, you know, please call in and, and stuff, I'm, I'm always eager to put your voice on the air. And um, unless you tell me otherwise, right? So if you call in and you say, look, this is just for you, you can use this topic for your content if you want, um, but please don't put my voice on the air, you know, and I'll respect that and I won't. Um, but I'm going to assume that if you call in, that it, then it's going to be okay for me to put your voice on the air. Um, however, I do always pre-screen the the voicemails that you leave, uh, just to make sure that there's nothing on there that could be potentially, you know, yeah, revealing of information, um, whether you know personal or otherwise, that uh, you know could be potentially harmful if it got into the ears or or, or uh, out here on the internet. So I always want you guys to know that if you call in, um, even if you don't say you know, don't put this recording out. If Even if you don't do that, I will always pre-screen the recordings of, of the voicemail and make sure that there's nothing that is shared on the voicemail that could put you in harm's way or anybody else, anyone else in harm's way. Um, and uh, so, you know, with in, in interest of that, I there's, there's going to be some topics that come up here um, that we're going to be listening to today. And I want to just give all of our listeners and viewers a trigger warning because we're going to be Hearing some things about um, trauma, PTSD, and and topics that are uh, going to circulate around like human trafficking. Okay, so fair warning, trigger warning, right? Um, I want you guys to be aware that what we're going to be hearing today is contains some topic, uh, subject matter on that topic. Um, and for that reason, I did not want to play all 12 minutes of this recording because it contains a person's name. And it also contains, you know, information of, of, of a workplace. Um, so with that being said, we're going to refrain from using this person's name that they left on their voicemail and call them by the name of the topic of today's video. Now, this person, uh, she calls in and um, we're, we're about to hear some of what she has to say, but it's uh, on the topic of Sigyn. Um, Sigyn is one of the goddesses mentioned in the lore in the Norse mythology, and she is the wife of Loki. Um, some of you that have been heathen and, and maybe pagan for any length of time know the story of Loki and, and, and how Sigyn is a part of the story. Um, there's not a lot of information in the myths about her, um, but before we, we talk more about the story, um, I do want to take the time to play this um, half of the voicemail. So again, for the sake of keeping people's identity safe and, you know, the topic at hand and making sure that everyone stays safe, um, we're going to call her Sigyn. Okay, so Sigyn calls in uh, to the podcast last week and left a really heartfelt, you know, message or messages. So um, go ahead and, you know, listen to that recording here. Um, let me get the file pulled up here, and we're going to listen to see what uh, Sigan has to say. Uh, let's see here. One, two, and three. All right, so here we go. All right. By, by the way, this is the the third of four recordings. I didn't, I'm not including the first two because, again, don't want to reveal, you know, information that could put someone in harm's way. So, anyway, here we go. <laughs> this is the third message. Okay. Uh, so... Yeah, so thank you times a million. And um, you're welcome. Yeah, I, I really do appreciate it too. Um, and, you know, my, <laughs> okay, so I do have a question. And, uh, 
and the question is, uh, you know, um, it's about trauma, I suppose. Uh, um, mm. I'm 34, and when I was um, 15, uh, uh, I was basically human trafficked, and um, I, it wasn't like a sexual thing. It was I was I was forced to be forced labor, and then I mean it was a sexual thing um, with mm. one person um, who was. 36 when I was 13. Um, uh, Let me just say real quick, guys, again, uh, you know, I gave the trigger warning, you know, um, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that people, first of all, have to endure things like this, you know, innocent people have to endure things like this in their lives and that this is even a thing and a very recent thing. You know, you hear about stuff like what Sigan is mentioning and it's like, you know, you would, you would think that that is a long, long time ago. That doesn't happen anymore. It does happen. It happens still. I'm very sorry for what happened. Um, so let's so, hear some more. Um, basically, uh, you know, I found uh, Hebrew when I was 18, well, about 17, I'd say. Um, and I escaped that situation. Uh, got with Good. my high school love, which was uh, who I'm with right now. Married uh, 13 years. And we're both here. And um, uh, pretty much my question is about Sigan. Um, so uh, I, I just, I don't know. I want to see more content on her. Um, you know, uh, it, I have a lot I could say on, on uh, this um, subject. Uh yeah, I, bet. I I don't even know what my question is. It's so crazy. Like it's just like a feeling part of it, the words. And I have a I have a hard time uh thinking of her in um like disconnecting her from myself, like my own personal experiences. Um but she's basically the only one I've ever like um like honored. I mean, I, I'll honor all the gods. I, I, I don't know what I'm, what I'm saying is she's the, the only one that's ever like not spoken to me, but like, I don't know how to explain it. Um, but yeah, I would say resonate, you know, um, that's a goddess that resonates with you. That is important to you because of the things that you've gone through now. Um, venerating, multiple deities right being a polytheist as 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 most heathens are obviously believing and venerating multiple gods and goddesses doesn't necessarily mean that you know you you um venerate all the gods all of the time at the same time you know that goes into hearth cult um which we've talked about on this podcast uh you know in previous episodes but it's okay to have a matron or patron deity and it sounds like sigin is your um matron deity I have taken a lot from her, and I've just been nonstop victorious, I guess. <laughs> um, I mean, just my journey alone, Great. my health journey, my my story, me being an advocate for domestic violence and um, human trafficking, and just how fearless I am, and my devotion, mm -hmm. and my courage, and everything. Like, all these things that I value in myself, and that took a long time to you know, get to, um, I kind of feel like. That was the first of, of, the of, of the, the 12, let's see, six minutes. So the first half of six minutes. And I want to say, before we go into this next segment of the recording, that fearlessness, right? Devotion, dedication, things like that. These are going to be things that when we talk about Sigin, the goddess, um, we are going to hear examples of that and i'm excited to talk more about that and i'm also excited to speak on uh, a deity who does not get a lot of media coverage if you want to call it that right like if you were to go on google and and, and search for information about sigan you're going to find just a couple of um scaldic poems where she's ref referenced maybe a couple of youtube videos where she's talked about in any great length or detail um but in terms of like uh, historical sources or anything else that we know of, you know, her having a place in Scandinavian or Germanic heathenry um, is 
next to non-existent. She's she's really only mentioned in the poems or in in the mythology. So, um, but yeah, definitely, you know, that fearless, that devotion, dedication, faithfulness. You know, we the the title that we call uh, Sigin is Sigin the Faithful. Um, but anyway, let's hear more from the caller, Sigin. Um, All the right, next, this is the last uh, message. <laughs> in here. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm about to start my run right now. I just did three mile walk and I got to do the rest of the run. <sighs> so, um, so on to the second um, question or feeling. I don't, I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, anyway, so, <sighs> um, yeah, so I, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, I have, I have trauma from my experience. Um, and you know, when, when I, when I was learning about Sigan's story, oh, that is the most darkest shit. Like that. Man. Is, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it is, you know, uh, it is probably one of the most tragic stories in the mythology that we have to, that is, that has survived. Um, again, we're going to go into more of the detail of that after the, after we listen to the rest of this. And you know, I I took a lot from her because uh, I didn't want to pretty much ruin the rest of my life by uh, getting revenge. Let's just put it that way. Uh, and when mm. I reported the person who did what they did to me, um, I was actually looked at like I was a suspect for the future crime of this person not being alive anymore. Um and that's very common for people who've been through what I went through because um, uh, it's really hard to sleep at night for some people. Maybe it's really hard to process and you don't know what's going on. And I was lucky and fortunate yeah. enough and privileged enough to have doctors, personal trainers. You know, my husband, he was going to school to be a police officer. Um, we had good people around us. Great. And, you know, that's important. You know, I mean, uh, any kind of any kind of experience or experiences that people have gone through in their life of of such debilitating nature, you know, uh, whether it's physical abuse, mental abuse, sexual abuse, anything like that that can really mess people up. Having a support system to help get you through it is 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 paramount. You know, a lot of times people who don't have those things are really up against it and and aren't able to get themselves through it. Um, so, so good for you, Sigan, for, for having a strong support system. Um, that's great. I'm glad that you're, I'm glad that you're here to tell the story, you know, as, as hard of a story as it must be to tell. Um, I, I have a lot of respect for you to come on, to come out and actually talk about it, you know, to, to, to call for all intents and purposes, a random stranger, you know what I mean? Somebody who you don't know, we don't know each other and, and talk about this, um, in 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 this detail so um that's very brave and i have a lot of respect for you for that former military like just doing you know the right things and being around the right people and everybody's got the good head on their shoulders so um i was very lucky and um also i don't think i could hurt a fly <laughs> uh, for being honest um but uh Anyway, <laughs> throughout I think that, uh, but Sigan pretty much. Um, Sigan pretty much, man. Uh, I just want to see more info on her. Maybe, maybe also like, um, just mental. I know, I know, I don't even know what I'm trying to ask, but like, there's so much to be, so much information to be gotten from the, from the stories and from other people's experiences. Mm. Um, and mental health and whatnot and just you know i also had brain surgery um i had wow. two kids emergency c-section uh mm. you know i've had I've, I've been through some stuff let me tell you uh and sounds like it um and never once did i give up never once did i want to give there you go guys never once you know Never give up. Um, never give up. Never, never surrender. You know. Um, 
really, really touching story. And thank you for sharing Sigan, the caller. Um, that is a, <laughs> again, it's touching. And, and I don't even know a, a, a scratching of the surface of the whole story, but just hearing enough of the story uh, and, and replaying the, the segments of your voicemails, um, you've definitely, you definitely had, had a run of it, you know? Uh, but yeah, Sigan. So <clears throat> let's talk about the goddess now, right? We'd love to have more information out there about her. Unfortunately, there isn't much because of nothing that survived um, through the Viking Age. If she had any uh, existence prior to Snorri Sturluson writing his prose edda, because that is the only surviving text that we have that I'm aware of, at least where she is mentioned. She's mentioned in two scaldic poems that are contained in Snorri Sturluson's prose edda. Um, she's mentioned in uh, Gilfaginning, and she is mentioned in Skull Um So if you guys want to check those stories out, um, I'll, 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 I'll have a, the name of them in the show notes or the, in the, or the description, rather. Um, so wherever you're watching or, or catching this, just check either the show notes or the description and put the names of the, of the poems down there for you so you can read about it. But I'm going to give you a rundown um, of, of, of Sigyn. Um, so as we mentioned early on, she is Loki's wife. And with Loki, they have two offspring, two children, uh, Norfi and Vali. Um, and we don't really hear much of anything at all about Sigyn until after the Balder incident. So when um, everybody is, you know, all the gods in, in Asgard are playing, you know, throw stuff at Balder. <laughs> um, Loki uh, tricked uh, Holder into uh, throwing a spear or an arrow of mistletoe at Balder, which is a fatal wound and it, and it kills Balder. Um, and then not only that, but not so not only is, is, is Loki responsible for Baldur's death, he also is re is the reason why Hel does not give him up because when um, Hel is, is, is you know, tempted to be bargained with of, for Baldur to, for him to return back to Asgard because he is the brightest and most beloved of the gods, um, she says that all of creation, everything must weep for Baldur. And everything in all the nine realms does, except for, as it turns out, to be Loki in disguise. And when this is discovered and when it is realized that it is all Loki's fault, you know, um, he is uh, he is he is punished by the gods for it. Um, and one of the things that happens is Narfi, I believe it's Narfi, gets turned into a wolf. Um and then Narfi, in his wolf state, kills his brother, Vali. Um, and the entrails of his brother, his guts, right, are used to bind Loki. They are turned into mystical, mythical chain, uh, chains or binds. Um, and then Loki is, is carted away to this cave underground. Um, and he is bound by his own son's guts to this rock where he is to be kept imprisoned until Ragnarok. And of course, Sigyn, his wife, goes with him. Now that's not the end of Loki's punishment, you know, because after all, now he is he is a kinslayer. He is uh, you know, an oath breaker. He has done all of these things against his own tribe um, of the gods. And now in addition to having his his children transformed um you know, into these grotesque monsters and or killed. Now he is bound to this rock by his own son's guts. And it furthermore, he has placed over him, I believe it, I think it mentions in one of the poems that Skadi uh, puts a snake over him. She has some sort of, you know, she's either binding him with the guts of, of Vali or she's putting the snake over his head. And anyway, the snake that is positioned over him drips venom from his mouth. And it's like very, it burns, you know. Um, so it's like this dripping, acidic burn, you know. Uh, and so Sigyn, to keep Loki from being tormented endlessly, holds a bowl over him 
and catches the venom that drips from the snake's mouth. Well, of course, the bowl will fill up, and periodically Sigin has to go and empty the bowl and then come back and continue the process. Well, while Sig the Sigin is away emptying the, the bowl of venom, the venom continues to drip, and every time the venom lands on Loki, he writhes in agony. And it is said in the stories that that is when uh, we have earthquakes. It is because Loki is stirring and, and writhing in agony from the venom that drips from the snake. Uh, that is part of his punishment. Um, so, th and that's about the extent that we know of, of Sig. And she's mentioned as being by his side and there to catch the venom that the snake drips and, and keeps him from being tormented endlessly with, from this venom or, or you know, by this venom. And uh, so this is why I like to use the term Sig in the faithful. You know, she is so devoted to her husband and so committed to him that she doesn't question the gods either. You know, she is mentioned in the stories as being one of the Aesir gods. So she is part of the tribe that imprisons and sentences Loki to this torturous existence until, until Ragnarok, you know, and she doesn't question that and she, and she doesn't abandon her husband. So she is, she is faithful to two sides of this scenario. Um, which makes me remember what our caller Sigan mentioned, where uh, you know she said that she um, really takes a lot from the goddess Sigan because you know she doesn't or hasn't um, been one to, to seek vengeance. And and of all the things that we read about the various aspects of the gods in the mythology, you know there are some um, you know like Vidar. For example, one of Odin's sons, he is a god of vengeance. He he, he seeks vengeance um, after after Odin is killed at Ragnarok, you know, and, and he kills Fenrir um, uh, to to avenge his father's death. Sigyn, and you know, there might be other gods that 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 can that maybe have that same sort of uh, aspect or, or attribute attested to them, but Sigyn isn't one of them. She is not a god or goddess of, of vengeance. She is a god of, of faithful devotion. You know, and she accepts the fact that I have a husband that I must be devoted to, and I am also part of a tribe, you know, and when the tribe's law is broken, I am bound by that law. And I am, uh, you know, I have to respect that. And regardless of what she had happened to her and to her family, she is right there at Loki's side and accepts the decision that was made. You know, so she has again this this stoic bravery, this this undying devotion, faithfulness. Um, that is, I think, admirable. You know, again, something of, of a very brave nature. She is also, I would like to consider, uh, thinking of her as a goddess associated with dealing with grief. You know, just think about it. Her children were transformed into a monster and ripped apart by one of her, one of their own. You know, her one son is transformed into the wolf, and then that son of hers kills the other son. She now has none of her children of the, of, of her own anymore that she knows them, um, and the one of her children's guts are are chain are, are chains now that that keep her husband in prison. How grievous of a thing, right? How brutal, how grotesque must that be? And again, this is a sentence that was imposed by the very tribe that she is uh, associated with and part of, you know? And it's not like she was like, oh, you know, that's my husband. How dare you? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get you for this. You know, you'll never, you'll, you'll. You know, you'll rue the day that you ever did this to Loki because I'm going to have my revenge. It's not a thing that that Sigyn is uh, is is mentioned of of feeling, but surely she had to have felt grief, you know. And I think that that is an important aspect of Sigyn that needs to be remembered as well is dealing with grief, and and it, and it's part of our of our human experience, 
You know, there's going to be times in all of our lives where we are presented with grievous situations. We are going to experience loss. We are going to experience things of stress or anxiety and, 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 and all of these various, you know, plights of, of physical and mental illness that can be debilitating and destroy people. You know, I've seen it happen to people I love. And I know that if you're listening and watching to this podcast, um, you have as well. You either are someone who is, um, you know, enduring plights of, of physical and or mental illness or know people who are or have or both, you know. So grief is something that we're all well, <laughs> well aware of, you know. Um, and there's going to be times throughout life that, that, that we are going to be really put up against it, you know. You imagine being in a, in a position like Sigan and facing something like that and not only facing it, enduring it, but not approaching the situation in a vengeful way against your own, you know, because let's, let's face it, Loki was in the wrong. You know, if you want to look at the, the way that society was at the time and how the stories are framed around the, uh, the way the world's, you know, the way the world was viewed and, and how the Germanic peoples at the time viewed the world. Um, what Loki did was a crime, flat out. Um, and at those times, I mean, laws were in place against crimes such as this. And when you broke with the law, I mean, it's like anything nowadays, you know, I mean, you break the law, you have to pay the, the fine, you have to do, you know, do the crime, do the time, pay the fine, you know. And she knew that and she accepted that and is like, you know, yeah, he did. He messed up. But because he messed up, because he did what he did, she was still faithful to him. It's like, I'm not abandoning you just because you broke the law. I am going to suffer along with you in my own way. Uh, you won't have to suffer alone. You know, I will give you relief as much as I'm able to. I will catch this acidic, you know, burning venom so that way you're not tormented constantly you know she does the best she can with that um and i also think that you know even though she's you know not mentioned of it very greatly uh in, in terms of her uh, as attributes or aspects of being a mother she is in fact a mother figure you know and and every mother loves their children you know um I would like to say that at least that, yeah, even if it's not shown or displayed in the ways that you would think are ideal or, or whatever, there, a mother's love is you can rattle the world, it can shake the very foundations of the earth. That's how powerful a mother's love is. And she is so loving, you know, if you think about the scenario and, and everything that this that story paints a, a picture of um, her love for, for Loki as, as a wife, you know, to her husband and, and to her children. Um, I think that a mother's love is something that is also an attribute or an aspect of Sigin that we can safely, you know, come away with or, or walk away from knowing about her, you know. And so when we talk about various aspects of the gods, you know, I'm always one to first and foremost look to things that um, pertain to what's closer to me than the gods are, right? Like I'm the, I'm the type of a heathen who looks at my ancestors for sources of inspiration, guidance, strength, you know, that sort of thing before I would look to the gods for it. But I don't, I don't, uh, this, you know, I don't, I don't not include them. They are included, you know, so they aren't outside of my practices, but they're not the first things that I go to. A lot of other folks might be the ones who, in times of grief or agony or, or difficulty, right, they, they look first to the gods. I know this is, I think, probably more uh, uh, true for newer heathens, you know, coming into this, especially if you're coming into it, uh, this practice, having left a another religion, um, like Christianity or something where, you know, 
the divine, the sacred God, whatever is is the most important thing there is, and there is nothing greater than than that. So you look to the gods, right? So there might be folks who are finding out now about Sigin, um, or having not thought about her much, you know, having read the stories or heard the stories and just never really put too much stock or thought into it, that are hearing this now and, and hearing the, the the depth at which we're going into it and going, wow, uh, if there was a, a god or goddess in our pantheon who you could connect with when needing help getting through times of grief, uh, learning lessons of devotion, courage, faithfulness, bravery, you know, all these things, um, love, you know, unconditional love. If there was ever a deity to, to look to for that sort of uh, inspiration, then and there you go. There's Sigin, you know. Um, and I hadn't previously thought much of her at all, you know. And, and it's interesting how when we look at, and I'm, I'm going to just say, like, I've fallen victim of, of this too, you know. Like, we always look to the gods as, as like, you know, well, Thor, you know, because he's he's mentioned more in the stories, you know. He has actual place names in Scandinavia. Odin, same thing, you know, Freyr, you know, all of the, the gods that have a, a, a strong presence, a vibrant background. They have place names named after them. We have historical evidence that 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 shows that they were venerated by the people um we don't have anything like that for some of these lesser known ones that have come up through later on in the myths you know what i mean like there's nothing that we know of um at least to my knowledge that you know loki and sigan were ever venerated as deities by people um and and and, and how we tend to just focus on one or, or a couple different gods or goddesses. And then yeah, different strokes for different folks, you know, it just kind of depends on the on your practices and how you want to approach it. I, I just because I'm talking now today and about Sigin doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to, you know, turn around and, and create, you know, a space on my altar for her. Um, but if this is going to be that little bit of a seed that gets planted in, in my mind, that Somebody asked me about it later on. I'm going to say, well, actually, I talked about this this one time, you know, and I made uh, I had somebody call into the podcast. And um, even though their question doesn't really I wouldn't classify it as a question, it was it was more like. This statement of awareness, right, bringing awareness to what exists, bringing awareness to what's going on. And I do have to say, you know, that it makes it makes real good sense that for someone to have gone through what they've gone through, right? Or call her a Sigin, for her to have gone through what she's gone through in her life, it makes total sense that the goddess Sigin is her matron, you know, her her main focus in her spiritual practices over the years. Um, because the the agony, the the, the pain, the, the grief, the struggle, um it can it can turn people really into, into into terrible people you know what i mean like again you you can become so consumed by the wrong that was done to you that it 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 transforms you into into this spiteful and vengeful person that you never fully heal you know and i don't want to try to sit here and say that i you know um you know, give it some time and you'll and you'll get through it and it'll heal I, I i don't think wounds like that ever really heal you know i think they scab over and i think they get um scarred over time and they don't uh i don't want to say they don't bleed as much or they don't hurt as much because again i think that there are times and occasions and triggers that happen that reopen those old wounds um but you know maybe Maybe over time, you know, there are ways and, and calluses that get built up that make it when the wounds do get re-aggravated, it's not quite such a, a burning sensation anymore, you know. Instead of it being this gushing wound, it's like, oh, just, just a little pinprick or, you know, it's it's manageable now. I I know how to deal with this, right? It's not such a 
crazy thing. Um, and I got to thinking too, you know, like talking about like old wounds and, and whatnot. I mean, you think about the mythology of it, um, Sagan and Loki and, and, you know, he's there till Ragnarok, right? Well, do they know when Ragnarok is? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, if you want to think about it from that angle, it's, you know, she's, she's enduring this with him. He's enduring this indefinitely until whenever that happens, you know? Yes, sure. It'll happen one day. Right. But if you want to like kind of get, you know, bring, bring ourselves to that level of, of processing something like that, it's, you know, it ain't like, well, you're here for the next 40 years and you have time to think about stuff and mark your calendar down. Like you're, you're here until Ragnarok. Well, when's that? I don't know, but in the meantime, I'm going to try to stop it, right? Because Odin, he 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 makes every effort to try and prevent it or delay it and stuff, you know. So it's it, you know it'll be on a day that ends in a day that ends in Y, but it's uh, you know, old Norse or right? a day that ends in G. I don't know <laughs> some of the dramatic days of the week, the names of the dramatic days of the week, you know. Uh, Wilderness, wilderness day but it's d-a-e-g right because the, the G. anyway but i'm getting nerdy with it so anyway um the indefinite you know knowing that it's going to happen at some time but when's that going to happen you don't know so you endure or they endure um patiently um just not knowing when that's going to happen and how anxious that can cause a lot of us to be you know well when am i going to catch a break you know I'm never going to catch a break. I can't catch a break. And I got to say this too, you know, I'm, I'm getting off the subject of Stigan a little bit, but I think it's all, all kind of the dots connect a little bit, right? I've had to, I've had to sever ties. I've had to walk away. I've had to cut ties from people who are just like, I can't ever catch a break, you know? Well, figure it out, man. Like find something break the cycle you know do something different quit just sitting there and, and complaining about it you know i mean i've look i've gone through stuff like that in my life and it's easy to, to get caught up in that like don't get me wrong it's it, it's easy to get caught up in the moment and be like oh, I, I can't possibly get through this and this is just my lot in life you know i'm destined to suck and whatever no, you know, if you want to, if you want to adopt that mentality and you want to think that way, then of course that's the way it's going to be. Life sucks sometimes, you know, not to be nihilistic, but I mean, life is pain. Life is full of suffering. That's just it. That's part of it. Now you can either condition yourself. You can either put yourself through the ringers and, and, and give yourself challenges and, and put yourself through these ordeals to prepare for those curveballs that life throws at you you know or you can just skate along and hope for the best and then when you get you know t-boned by this destructive force of of life that that throws you way off course and and you're not prepared for it you're not conditioned for it you haven't put yourself through ordeal or adversity to be able to handle it then it then yeah it's gonna it's gonna going to derail you almost indefinitely it'd be really hard to get back on track after that and i think that's one of the you know things and i've had some again crazy things happen to me in my life things that would have i think broken other people had i not gone through things up to that point in my life that taught me lessons and that prepared me for the hard times you know like you know, we, we, we see messages and, and memes and, and, and stuff all the time about how the sword, you know, the good sword doesn't, it doesn't become battle worthy until it's been put through the fire, until it's been beaten, until it's been quenched, until it's gone through all of these things, you know, had the impurities beaten out of it. Shining gold doesn't become shining gold until it's been put in the furnace, you know, subjected to those extreme conditions to pull out the impurities pull out the slag to get rid of that less than stellar art and it's i mean you can say that it's it's poetic and you know but it is it's true you know 
You're not going to be able to handle things that life throws at you if you don't proactively decide to suffer. Um, and I say that uh, very with, with conviction. Choose to suffer. Choose to put yourself through things. You know, um, go without food. Go hungry a little bit, you know. Um, get hot. Get sweaty. Be cold. Get wet. You know, put yourself through physical pain. Put yourself into situations that, that are going to really challenge your mental and physical fortitude. You know, do it smartly, right? Uh, you know, again, don't, don't don't take what I'm saying here today as this, like, uh, you know, in reckless abandon, you know, do something that, that could be potentially fatal or anything like that. I'm just saying, you know, don't... Uh, don't stay comfortable all the time. You'll become soft, and you won't be able to handle life when it when it really wants to, to mess with you, as it will. And it does. Nobody is exempt from it, you know? So proactive suffering, you know, choose to suffer. Put yourself through those, those ordeals, because what does ordeal do? What does adversity do? It breeds worth. Yes, it breeds worth. Adversity breeds worth. Ordeal breeds worth. Um, not my original phrase, Eric Word Weaver Shervin from the Ravens call. Uh, I heard that from him years ago, and you know, I never heard it put that way, but I I've known that concept my whole life. You know, live live a hard life. You know, put yourself through the ringer from time to time, and then. You know, when when things come down the road that really test you, you're prepared for it. Is it still going to suck along the way? Yes. Yes, it will. You know, I'm not saying that you're going to be, you know, so callous to the situation that you'll have no reaction to it. It's, it's going to elicit a reaction. You're going to feel the results of whatever it is that happens. But it's not going to be as debilitating. It's not going to be as, you know, the trauma is not going to destroy you. And I wonder um, if in, in the cases where, you know, trauma does ruin so many people's lives. You know, I have to wonder if it's because they hadn't been given the chance to be proven and tested beforehand, you know. You know, guys, we live in a, we live in a, a generation and we live in a time. We live in a we live in a society, um, <laughs> but we we do we live in a, a a period of our humanity's existence where everything is is meant to be easy. How convenient everything is! Oh, you're hungry. You don't have to cook. You can look. You don't even have to leave your house. You don't even have to leave your apartment, your home, to get food brought to you. We have apps for everything. You have a question about something, you've got a, a mobile device that you can, you know, Google and get an answer for it in seconds. Um, knowledge is at our fingertips. Maybe it's not all good knowledge or, or, you know, reputable knowledge, but it's there. It's accessible, you know. Um, are we cold? We turn the thermostat up. Are we hot? We turn it down, you know. With enough money and with enough, you know, you can get anything you want. And I'm not saying this is the case for everybody, but relatively speaking, you know, life, we've got it easy. We've got it easy now compared um, in, in comparison in, in, in relative terms um, to, to even, you know, less than 100 years ago. You know, I mean, you know, and people be like, oh, you know, but it's things are hard now, too. Yeah, you know, I mean, look. I'm not thing there are things that really suck. I mean it's it's very hard for people to get ahead in life, you know? Everything's so damn expensive. Um people don't understand the meaning of faithfulness and loyalty, you know. You know, talking about Sigan and and how devoted she is. How many people nowadays if they had if if the situation that that panned out in the stories and the way that the society you know uh was at the time 
the way the laws and stuff were at the time. Uh, you know, how many people nowadays would, if they're, you know, if they were in Sigan's shoes, you know, what would, would be the first thing they do? Well, they'd probably get on social media and bitch about it. I can't believe the Aesir did this. Guys, you know, I'm tagging them. Go and, go and you know, shame them publicly. And, you know, <laughs> uh, you know and then and, and, and find ways of, of canceling them, you know. Can you believe what they did? This is unacceptable. Instead of being the, the stoic figure that that Sigan is is portrayed in the in the myth as being faithful to her tribe, understanding that when law is broken, penalties are in place for breaking of law. You know, you're not exempt from it just because you're part of the tribe, you're part of the group. Part of the family. Oh, it's okay. We'll get over it. Oh. You done you messed up, A.A. Ron. You done messed up, A.A. Ron. I'm for real. <laughs> you know? And that's it. Like, you know, I don't think with the exception of small groups, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying like everybody out here is 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 out for lunch when it comes to such concepts as loyalty, fealty trust troth right being being faithful to someone or someone's that your faithfulness to them you know th those those boundaries um uh, are not broken just because you get offended by something like hey look when 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 you mess up it, you got to pay the price you got to pay the shield you know you got to pay the recompense and sometimes those recompense that 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 recompense is because the crime was so high, and it was such an, uh, an egregious offense. I mean, you're 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 cast out, you're outlawed. Um, how that applies in modern times and stuff. I mean, that that's for tribes to determine themselves. That's for kindreds and groups and things like that to determine themselves. But when it happens, it's nobody else's decision. It's it's no one else's right to say anything about it except for that group. At least in my opinion, you know, uh, and, and, and if things get shared outside of the tribe's construct or the group's construct and it gets leaked out into the public, well, then, of course, it's going to raise alarms and it's going to be like, what the hell is wrong with you people? Why are you doing it that way? You know, and I'm being vague when I'm saying stuff. I'm not, you know, look, guys, I'm not I'm not saying that you should be, you know, chaining people to rocks indefinitely because they, you know committed a crime in your, in your group like i feel like i have to say you know again we live in this society and we live in a, such a time now that you have to include disclaimers on anything you know what i'm saying is that the mythology is the mythology it's not necessarily that you you go and you say well i'm doing it this way because that's how the gods did it or or, or that's i'm doing it or we should do it this way because look what it says in uh you know whatever stanza of the Havamal, you know or here's a classic one you know um in locust Senna, when odin says that he will not have a drink because or, or he will not have a drink unless loki is given a drink and now that has turned into amongst a lot of uh heathens and, and, and pagan circles as that we will not bl give bloat to odin without bloating to, to loki at, at the same time because of what it says in Locust Center. I mean, here's my thoughts on that. Um, since you asked, <laughs> right? Since you asked without asking. I mean, that's what Odin did. You know, Odin says that he mixed their blood and they are, you know, blood brothers in a, in a, in a way. And that because of that oath that was taken between the two of them, he will not have a drink poured for him without one being poured or Loki. Well, what the hell does that have to do with us? You know what I mean? Uh, that's his deal with Loki. And I don't, I don't, uh, I don't, that doesn't translate to me as like, well, if I'm going to give bloat to Odin, then I have to include Loki as well. And it also hasn't ever been, you know, like we don't have anything that suggests that that was ever a, a concept or a thought given in, in, in Scandinavia. I think, you know, like, what what information we have of of 
Odin being venerated is that Odin was a, a, a god of the kings, of the nobility, of the aristocracy, of the, of the elite, the elite of society, whether it was the political elite, the nobility, the warrior elite, the war bands, you know, that was who, that, that class of society at the time were who the who who venerated odin they weren't the common people you know those, those, those these folks you know the common folks they were uh if any of the gods were 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 looked at you know from a historical sense i mean it was you know thor and and, and freyr and you know earlier on than that you know we're talking like tier two you know the germanic tribes like uh um uh, you know earth worship things like that you didn't uh you know we don't see anything anywhere documented at least or, or or surviving that that would have even suggested that this concept of we have to include loki in our ritual because we're giving uh, you know offering to odin ever was a thing so to, to 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 pull that one segment out of the lore and use that as like your guiding principle to, to do it. I mean, look, I'm not here to tell you that if you're doing that, you're wrong. I'm just saying, in my opinion, one has nothing to do with the other. You know, just because Odin and Loki mingled blood at some point in time, it was a, a line in a, in a in a myth. Yeah, it has nothing to do with me as a, as a as a heathen. You know, I don't think that Odin is going to. Should I, you know, ever have, have a, a situation where I'm bloat, I'm, I'm performing bloat to Odin. Uh, that he's going to ignore me or or, or not, uh, you know, engage with with what's going on because I didn't include Loki in it. I don't think that's how it works. It doesn't make sense to me. And so, there's a lot of that I think that comes around. You know, there's a lot of that 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 people look at and say, well, because of how it's in the lore, because of what they said, you know, this is how we have to do it. I mean, this isn't the Bible. You know what I mean? Like this isn't not this isn't the same as as what Christians have. This isn't you know, doctrine that is the Christians have, you know, law, customs, doctrines, things like that are, are established amongst the tribes, you know, so my tribes do customs law are going to be my customs and my laws and our laws, not yours, not theirs, unless you are part of our, our group and part of our collective, you know? So, yeah, I go, you know, here we go, random ramblings. You know, we, we go off on different topics and different mm, tangents, right? Um, and there's mine for the week. <laughs> Don't take the lore so seriously. Um, I, I can't get it out. Don't take the lore so seriously. But learn from them, I guess, is, is my point. You know what I mean? Like, maybe there's lessons to be picked up along the way. I mean, here we are talking about a goddess who has just a couple of references made of her. And, you know, throughout this podcast, I'm like, you know, maybe this is a goddess that you can look to for help with things like dealing with grief or drawing strength and inspiration from her because of her level of devotion and her committed, you know, faithfulness and, and, and stuff. And some of these other things that we've talked about already on this episode. Maybe it's a little oxymoronic for me to be saying, don't follow the lore like it's the Bible. And over here saying, on the other hand, like, take Sigan as an example for, for certain things. I think the messages are, are different, though. I think, I think what I'm saying is, you know, you can see some of the relatable things about the gods and the stories and find inspiration there. Um, but I don't think we should be taking it as, as you know, Holy commandments that need to be adhered to or else, you know, or else we're going to get our, you know, our son turned into a wolf. And <laughs> but anyway, guys, um, that's my that's my ramblings for this week um, on Sigan the Faithful. Um, and thank you, Sigan, who called in and um, wanted this to be talked about. If you guys have anything about Sigan that you know of, maybe your own hearth cult your own practices your own experiences working with this goddess that you want to share in the comments or share in the um show notes or anywhere that you find an option or an area to put it um please feel free to share it down there i would love to hear from you guys and 
if you have more source material that talks about SIGIN outside of what I've already mentioned um, and what is down in the description and show notes. would love to hear about that as well. So you can comment, you can write into the podcast. The email address for it is midgardmusingstn at gmail.com. You can also call in to the hotline just like SIGIN did. 615-671-9832. It is a Google Voice number. You have three-minute limits on your voicemails, but if you want to call back multiple times and uh, do all that, then yes, by all means, please do. As a reminder, if you do call in, I can put your voice on the air, but I will always listen to it ahead of time, and if there's anything that I feel could be oversharing of information that could put you or someone else at risk, I won't do that. And as always, if you do not want your voice on the air, please be sure to let me know in the recording that you do not want your voice on a podcast. It's just something that you wanted to do to talk to me directly, and I will respect that. I might allude to the conversation in a future episode, but I will never put your voice on the air if you explicitly do not want me to do so. Okay? So that's my guarantee. And you can take that to the bank. So... I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, give it a like on the video platform. Follow along on the Spotify platform. Share it around wherever you're catching this from. Uh, subscribe and follow to all of my socials that are linked in the link tree link down in the description and show notes of this episode. And thank you so much for, for being here today and rambling with me for, for the last bit. Um, so until we talk to each other again, may the gods continue to notice you. And may your ancestors smile upon you. Thanks again.